Opioids like morphine, codeine, oxycodone, and heroin are drugs that block pain signals from reaching our brain. Because of their pain blocking effects, opioids are often prescribed to people after surgery or to help someone cope with a long-term health condition, like cancer. Although they can help us cope with pain, opioids have a dark side. They are highly addictive. I had this whole idea about people that used opiates and then it happened to me. My whole life was consumed. There wasn't a day that went by that I couldn't, like my every minute when I woke up had to be about getting loaded, getting heroin so I could function. If I didn't have the pills, I felt like I was gonna die. And I just couldn't live that way anymore. It was like living on the edge of a cliff. It becomes about ways and means to find more instead of what the right things should be for us as people. Things that were important to me stopped being important, like take care of my daughter and showing up on time to pick up my kid from school or going to work. Opioids are not only addictive, they also can cause opioid overdose. In America, many people die of opioid overdose each year. Let's say that this dot represents a thousand people. In 1999, a little over 8,000 people in the United States died from opioids. Since 1999, though, this number has grown year by year, so much that in 2017, an astounding 47,600 people died from opioids in America. American Indian and Alaska Native people have disproportionately felt the effects of opioids. In 1995, they had passed the um, Pain Act that we were to treat pain to the nth degree. That was your fifth vital sign. And that was the big impetus, you must treat, you must treat. So as we see over the last 20 years, we've created or helped assist create substance use disorder. I was addicted to um, pain pills. I had fibromyalgia. It was taking them for about 15 years, um, just staying home, staying at my house, never going out, just taking my pills. That was my whole world. You know, I got her and doctor gave me pills, and then next thing you know, I was like addicted to them. So I would go out and after my prescription was over with, I would try to go find pills to buy. Last August, I actually tried to commit suicide because it was, my life was, couldn't function anymore. I've never felt so much pain in my life whether it was withdrawals or hurting others, like to steal or, you know, borrow money and not pay it back, or the scariest thing in my life, not being able to communicate and say what's going on. Hey, I'm, I'm suffering here and I can't say what it is. It ruined my uh, marriage and, and took me away from my kids. You just feel embarrassed, ashamed, um, like you, I would walk around town with my head down. Opioid addiction has caused a great deal of suffering for American Indian and Alaska Native people. Fortunately though, there is more hope than ever. Today, we have effective treatments that can help those who are addicted to opioids recover. For instance, speaking with a counselor on a regular basis can help people who are addicted to opioids change behaviors related to their opioid use. Also, taking certain medications may make the recovery process easier by decreasing cravings. Combining counseling with medication to treat opioid addiction is called medication-assisted treatment, or MAT. MAT is the most effective way to recover from opioid addiction. Medications such as Suboxone can be critical for a lot of individuals suffering from opiate use disorder. And a big reason why is the research has been very clear. Uh, most patients with a history of opiate use disorder who engage in an abstinence-based program will drop out within the first 72 hours. I've watched people do so great in recovery on medicated assisted treatment where they couldn't when they were trying abstinence-based treatment. Two medications commonly used to treat opioid addiction are methadone and buprenorphine. Methadone and buprenorphine reduce cravings for opioids. Another medication commonly used to treat addiction is called naltrexone. 
Naltrexone works by blocking the high people might normally feel from taking opioids. After I took the medicine, I, I calmed down and I was just like kind of in shock because I was like, oh my God, I just felt normal. And it's been like, I had not felt normal in years. I had known about the MAT program in Sluts and I had always had this idea in my head if I could just get 10 days of clean time, I could get on this shot called Vivitrol. So I got out of jail and I did exactly that. I went to the Sluts clinic and sure enough, they had the shot. I had talked to them before in the past about getting the shot and they happened to have one and they gave me the shot that day and I've been clean and sober ever since. There are many misconceptions about medications that treat opioid addiction. One myth is that taking medications like methadone and buprenorphine is just trading one addiction for another. Using methadone isn't like replacing heroin. With methadone, it makes you, and it doesn't make you high, it makes you stable. It helps me not be sick. And when you're not sick, you wanna go and obviously go to work and take care of your kids or whatever. but. I'm gonna be on methadone as long as, you know, it takes for me not to go out there and use heroin. People that are on Suboxone are able to live like functioning normal lives. Like I know so many people that used to use heroin and now they're on Sublicate or Suboxone and they used to not be able to have a full-time job, have their kids and live a normal life. And today they have full-time jobs, they have their children back, they run NA meetings and they are productive members of society. Another myth? is that methadone and buprenorphine should only be taken for a short period to help someone detox from opioids. What we're finding is patients usually need anywhere between two and five years of medication for their brain to heal, for their ability to survive without opioids and falling back on that to be able to be cemented. Suboxone helps you, helps you to maintain um, your life of sobriety. It keeps you on the right path. We can heal our communities through educating ourselves and others about opioids and supporting those who are struggling. As we've learned, there are life-saving medications that can help people who are addicted to opioids recover. You know, it feels good not to wake up sick. I'm finally a grandma to my grandkids. Before, I, I was their grandma, but I was the grandma in the background. And now I'm involved in their lives. I'm right in the middle of it. Come like the first dose they gave us for the Suboxone strips, I literally, like when I got home and all my stuff and I was relaxing and kind of was just like started crying as hard as I could. Like my body was just, Finally, I can take a break. I have a relationship with my mom that I used to never have. I have a relationship with my daughter that was estranged. I have, um, I feel like I have respect in my community. We can heal our communities through education, action, and embracing culture. To learn more, text opioids to 97779 to receive videos, quizzes, and more. To grow your knowledge about opioids, and learn how you can be an effective advocate for your community. Also visit the Northwest Portland Area Indian Health Board's website at www.npaihb.org forward slash opioid for information, fact sheets, and videos about opioids.